It's 10 p.m. in Tokyo. Welcome to Newsline. I'm Michio Kojima with the news at this hour. Tokyo Electric Power Company has released more images showing the inside of the damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. They were taken by a remote-controlled robot to show the interiors of the buildings housing reactors 1, 2, and 3. Tokyo Electric Power Company says that inside the number 2 reactor, the humidity was so high that the camera lenses steamed up and the robot was not able to move forward. It says the reason for this is because the suppression pool in the basement may have been damaged in an explosion, causing steam to rise to the upper levels. This is a photo of the number one reactor taken on Sunday. Debris that appears to be pieces of concrete can be seen scattered about on the floor. The robot seen here is one of the two that we used to take the photos. The photos believed to have been taken near the entrance of the northern set of double doors of the building housing the number one reactor. Part of what's believed to be a circuit board can be seen towards the back. The floor is dry. This is a photo of the number two reactor taken yesterday. A thick vertical pipe can be seen. This is footage taken previously of the building housing the number two reactor. A worker opened the first of a set of double doors. In the latest operation, the robots opened these second doors. This is the area to the right after entering. A robot thought to have taken the photo from this position. The photo is blurred because the camera lens was fogged. The humidity was high at about 94 to 99 percent, so the camera lens fogged up and the robots could not go any further. Tetco says the explosion damaged the suppression pool below the building and may be causing steam to rise up to the ground floor. This is a photo of the number three reactor taken on Sunday. Sheet-like material is hanging from the ceiling. What appear to be steel sheets can be seen on the floor, so the robots could not advance any further. The light towards the rear is an entrance through which vehicles can bring in large machinery. The photo was taken in this direction. This is the entrance. This round of investigation revealed for the first time that both of the double doors at the delivery entrance were open. Tokyo Electric says that at the time of the earthquake, work was underway with the outside door open, and the inside door may have opened from the shock of the hydrogen explosion on March the 14th. TEPCO says that what it's learned so far about the inside of the buildings housing the nuclear reactors is limited, so it's considering whether or not it should continue the investigation with the robots. Work is underway at the damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant to transfer highly radioactive water from the number two reactor to a nearby waste processing facility. TEPCO says at 10.08 a.m. it began operating a pump to transfer the water from the number two reactor building to the processing fa facility. TEPCO says 25,000 tons of highly contaminated water has accumulated in the basement of the turbine building and service tunnel connected to the reactor. The company began to transfer about 10,000 tons of the water. It will use an 800 meter hose that can withstand high pressure and radiation to connect the tunnel of the number two reactor and the waste processing facility. TEPCO plans to operate around the clock to move about 480 tons of the water per day. It is expected to take about 26 days until mid-May to move the 10,000 tons of water. The company has taken various safety measures to deal with the highly radioactive water, including sealing all cracks on the walls of the facility. It says it will control the level of the water at the facility to prevent it from leaking. TEPCO says the transfer has been going smoothly with no leaks of contaminated water so far. This TEPCO official says there have been no leaks and the transfer is going as planned. The utility firm says it plans to reuse the water for cooling the reactors after removing radioactive materials and salt from it in a system to be set up probably in July. The transfer of the highly contaminated water has begun nearly one month after it was found in the building. Whether the transfer will go on as planned will be the key to bringing the power plant under control.
Earlier in HK World's, Lori Yukimizno gave us analysis of the recovery process outlined by TEPCO and the transfer of the highly contaminated water. Now, uh, many people are wondering if the reactors can be contained and scheduled by TEPCO. And uh, today, uh, they revealed the interior of the, uh, the reactors. What can you tell us? At number one and number three units, rubbles are scattered. So they have to clear them away. So it may take some time uh, before they can start a full-scale operation. The problem is number two unit. The image is not as clear as those of number one and number three units. This is because the camera lens wasn't clear enough because of high humidity, almost 100 percent, and temperature was higher than 40 degrees Celsius, so radiation level was not very high, but for workers wearing protective clothes and masks, it is so hot and muggy, just like being in sauna bath. So once they enter the area, then they, uh, they cannot see anything, so visibility is very poor and it is impossible to work. The steam is thought to be leaking from cracks of the suppression pool, so it has been stopped. And today, uh, the transfer of the contaminated water in the tunnel of number two reactor to uh, the uh, wastewater treatment facility began. Where is this work uh, uh, positioned in the roadmap? The roadmap says the goal of the first three months is to reduce release of radioactive materials. So transfer and storage of highly radioactive materials are important factors. The contaminated water is believed to be leaking from reactors. The present volume is at number one, 20,500 tons, at number two, 25,000 tons, and at number three, 22,000 tons. In total, it's 67,500 tons. At number two unit, the water is highly radioactive, more than uh, 1,000 millisieverts per hour. So because of continuing water injection taking place, it's increasing day by day, and the water in the tunnel is uh, reaching 80 centimeters below the top. So if it is left as it is, it may flood in three weeks' time. Typical places a priority to disposing this uh, water. The water will be transferred to this waste disposal facility. Its capacity is 30,000 tons. They checked its integrity today, and they started the transfer operation this morning. TEPCO plans to send about 10,000 tons uh, by the middle of May. But the uh, reactor number two has 25,000 tons of uh, contaminated water. Why not all of them, only 10,000 tons? If all the water is transferred, it may leak into the surrounding environment. In case some holes are made in the tank, the water may leak. By keeping the water level lower than the surrounding underground water level, because of a difference of pressure, in case some holes are made, the underground water may enter, but the contaminated water will not go out. So, the water volume has to be less than 10,000 tons. Now, uh, the rest of 15,000 tons, what are they going to do it? Originally, it was planned to transfer the water to the condenser in the turbine building, but it's already full. TEPCO plans to build a new water disposal facility by June, and uh, they are going to dilute the radioactivity and use that water for cooling the reactor. Then they can send more contaminated water to this facility, but it is difficult to move 
move all of 15,000 tons of water into the facility. So they are discussing setting up another tank to store highly radioactive water. And for number one and the number three units, they plan to set up a temporary tank uh, by the end of next month. And also, they plan to transfer the water to a mega float, uh, which has a capacity of uh, 10,000 tons. Still, it may not be sufficient. So what kind of challenges do they face uh, for the TEPCO's uh, roadmap to be implemented? The point is whether they can complete a facility to treat highly radioactive water by June, and also whether they can operate it smoothly. If the construction delays and some troubles happen in water disposal, they may be, uh, there may be a major delay in the schedule. Another point is whether they can prepare new storages for the water in number one and number three units. So delay in water disposal uh, will affect recovery of cooling system of the reactors. So we hope TEPCO will build more disposal facilities and tanks as soon as possible. Over a month since the earthquake, huge amounts of wreckage continued to hinder restoration work in the devastated areas. In the city of Sendai, work finally got underway on Tuesday to clear out the many vehicles that were swept away by the tsunami. Workers used cranes mounted on trucks to start moving some of the automobiles that were dumped by the tsunami in residential areas. Once the vehicles have been collected, the city will launch a major co-op operation on Friday to remove other wreckage. Earlier notices were placed on the vehicles so that owners could let the authorities know if they did not want their cars removed. The collective vehicles will be restored in Sendai until the city decides whether they will be returned to their owners or scrapped. More than 14,000 people have been confirmed dead since the Great East Japan earthquake and tsunami. The National Police Agency's survey says a vast majority of deaths were caused by the tsunami and most of the victims were seniors. The agency released the findings on Tuesday following a month-long analysis of the cause of death of 13,135 people from the three hard-hit prefectures of Iwate, Miyagi, and Fukushima. The study says 12,143 people drowned. That's 92% of the total deaths. 578 people, or 4.4% of the total, died because of injuries sustained when they were washed away or crushed under rubble. This is much different than what happened in the 1995 Great Hanshin earthquake. In that disaster, more than 70% of the victims died after being crushed by debris or, being, or because they suffered, suffocated after being buried under rubble. The National Police Agency says people over the age of 60 accounted for about 65% of the confirmed deaths in the March 11th quake and tsunami. Many elderly people were at home because the disaster happened during the day and fleeing to higher ground was difficult.